Yeah. Okay, so that was the next lie. Now they're talking about going into Iran. Now, how would you feel if you were Iran and you had this big, powerful country, America, go into your next door neighbor, take over, take over their oil fields, right? Wouldn't you be worried that what they were going to do to you? Of course you're going to be worried. But, uh, but the people of America don't think about it from Iran's point of view. They think about it from our point of view. So now we're going to send more troops into Iraq and keep building up because they, they want Iraq and the Middle East to become part of the New World Order. And uh, I, Iraq was using uh, Saddam wanted to start using euros instead of dollars, right? He was uh, messing up their, their whole consumption. Iranists want to start using euros instead of dollars. They are, they are. Okay? So I'm saying what they're trying to do is preserve their power. And one lie leads to the next lie, leads to the next lie. And until you get to the root cause of 9-11, which is supposedly the war on terror, we'll never solve our problems here. Should we send more troops into Iraq? Should we not send more troops into Iraq? Well, the truth is, the fact is, that it all goes back to this war on terror. Where did 9-11 come from? That's the root cause of everything. And until we have a full investigation, find out why Building 7 fell down, why they shipped all the steel out of America so quickly, you know, from the buildings, why, why all the um, things that don't make any sense about 9-11, until we find out why it really happened, you know, we'll never understand why there's a war on terror. And we'll never be able to prove that the war on terror is a phony. You know, Nick and I discussed many things. One of the things we discussed, what he brought up in conversation, was reducing world population and felt that there were too many people in the world. In a way, I agree, there are too many people in the world, but I don't think I have the authority to say who's going to die and who's not going to die, you know. But they felt that uh, they want to reduce world population, and uh, he felt that it should reduce by half. He even mentioned to me once uh, that they, they were having a real problem trying to solve the Israel-Palestinian um, problem. And he talked to me once about uh, they were playing with the idea of bringing Israel to Arizona. You know, and taking all the people from Israel and giving everybody a million dollars and setting up Israel in the state of Arizona. Unbelievable. Just to, to, end that, to end that problem. Because that, that, that's a problem that, they, that they're not in charge of, in a sense. They, they're not controlling that problem. They're very arrogant. They can do whatever they want to do. We have, we, we've given these people the authority to create money out of thin air. And through that device, they control everything. And if you want to win the battle to stop that, you have to deny them the ability to create money. It's only because they can make money that they have all this power. They literally have the money machines. They, they have the money machines. They can print it. They can do whatever they want to do. They own everything. Apparently we take over pretty quick, and we were the guys that issued the money. Everybody had to come give us real assets for the use of this money we just printed up. You know, people, people uh, you know, I, I tell people, you know, uh, why in the world... Does the American government borrow money from the banks when they have the ability to create it themselves without borrowing it and paying interest on it? Why? And nobody can answer that question. Not one politician ever raises that. Why does the American government borrow money when they can create it? Without paying interest. Well, we did create it At, up until uh, 1913. 1913. And, and so people say, well, because if the American government does it, it will create inflation. That's the answer. I say, well, let's look at it. The American government has the Federal Reserve do it, which creates the same inflation as if they did it. But also with the inflation, now you're getting massive debt. So with the Federal Reserve, you have inflation and debt. Now, if the American government made the money, backed by gold, which limited the amount they could make, you wouldn't have debt and you wouldn't have inflation. But, but inflation was only about 50% from the 1780s, I've looked it up, until the late 1800s. And then we had the central banks already trying to cause some panics, which they then used to push the Federal Reserve. And if we look at inflation, since 1913 into 2007, uh, it's exponential. In fact, a dollar is worth about two pennies to what it was worth in 1913. Federal Reserve Chairman, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, doubled the money supply from 2000 to 2006. Uh, and then Edward Bernanke, the new Fed chief, came in and said he's going to double it again in the next few years. 
And then he said, I'm now I'm going to make the money supply numbers secret. And so now we don't even know. Right. Uh, but the evidence is they are just, I mean, in the curve of inflation, it gradually grows. And then suddenly at a point, it goes straight up. And it seems we've it's now parabolic, reached, yeah. yeah, parabolic. But the, but the thing is that uh, the only thing I disagree with you on from uh, – uh, early 1800 to 1913, there was no inflation other than during the Civil War. You know, when Lincoln was was well, talking about how much a dollar was worth. And I know the dollar, uh, never changed. The dollar, the, the, there was no inflation in that whole hundred years. There was no inflation. People knew what the money was worth. They could retire. They knew what it would cost them to live their lives out. There was no problem. It was only since 1913 when the Fed came in that we created massive inflation and massive debt. So the way you said earlier, then there really wasn't inflation. There was no inflation. So, so you don't get inflation when the government issues the money, at least in the U.S. history. Well, no, not if it's backed by gold. Well, exactly. But I'm talking about, and I did look this up, um, and I believe that if, that if you look after the country was set up, and some of the things back with Andrew Jackson and the rest of it, there were points where it spiked and there were manipulations. There were points, mostly during the Civil War. Yeah. Well, that's that's because uh, Lincoln printed so much money. Exactly, that. exactly. That's right. But once that ended, but basically there was no inflation other than, other than that during that short period of time. I mean, a loaf of bread was a loaf, of course, the same thing. People could plan their lives. Today, they, they, they plan inflation. Now you have two parents working. Uh, they, can, they can't afford to, take, to, to pay for their family anymore. The kids are going to state-run schools now. The kids are being indoctrinated how to think. They're being given Ritalin. They're being given all these drugs. The whole country is being dumbed down. It's all because of the Federal Reserve System. And the Federal Reserve System and these bankers are responsible for the demise of America. And uh, if we ever want to win this battle, you must shut down the Federal Reserve System. And we must shut down these bankers and restore sound money to this country. Will you talk a little bit about some of the families that own the private Federal Reserve, the stock in it? I mean, obviously, you say you're not a big expert on Bilderberg Group, but you talk about how it's the same system worldwide. It is the same families. They meet and kind of set the policy each year, and then it goes to the Royal Institute of International Affairs in England, it goes to the CFR in the U.S., and then these are their management bodies uh, where they wield control, uh, really the de facto Congresses uh, over the nation. So, I mean, I would like you to speak some about the families that own the Federal Reserve and if you can't connect it into these other international bodies. Well, I, I can't speak to those families because I want to speak about, you know, what I know for fact. I, 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 everything else is speculation, and I don't like to speculate. You know, I know about Rockefeller because I, I was friends with him. We would talked about it, and I can tell you firsthand. What did Rockefeller tell you about the Federal Reserve and their family owning part of it? Well, uh, he said the New York Fed is the main controlling interest of the Federal Reserve System. They control the bulk of it. So the New York Fed is really the Federal Reserve System. Even though there's 12 different banks, it's run by the New York Fed. And the New York Fed is basically the Federal Reserve System. So who's ever running the New York Fed is where, and, and the families that control it, control the New York Fed. And they're, they're the main uh, uh, engine behind the Federal Reserve System. And that's a wing of the Bank of England. Uh, well, the, well, the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve are partners, you know, and the Bank of England is a private bank, and so is the Bundesbank in Germany, and the Bank of all the, all the banks of the G8 countries are all private banks, the private central banks. And look, what happened in Europe? Didn't Europe vote down uh, the European Constitution? Yes. They're still doing it. Didn't they vote down the euro? They're still doing it. They don't care what the people vote. They do whatever they want to do. What we want doesn't matter anymore. It's their agenda. It's their plans that matter. Isn't that prima facie evidence of a tyranny? Oh, well, there's no question we're in tyranny. There's no question we're living in a world where uh, uh, the American citizen is no longer a free individual human being to do uh, the things that they wish to do. You know, we're, we're slaves, and, and, and it's getting worse. What do we got to do to bring these people down? Got you, in my opinion, uh, you must have done the Federal Reserve System. And I think that um, there has to be an uprising. There has to be an uprising.